What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I wanna talk about the difference between really big websites and really small websites. I'm talking high profile, huge, massive, everybody knows it, millions and millions of people go there a day or a week versus your niche kind of portfolio or smaller kind of brand and the level of experimentation that you can have between the two. All right, let's dive right in and let's look at a couple of examples to prove my point that the larger the website, the more chill, the more standardized it needs to be. So I'm here at CocaColaCompany.com, one of the largest companies in the world that makes drinks or soda or whatever. And you can see here it is, so plain Jane. I mean, we're talking white background, logo centered, and a very standard, navigation, like a navigation from 1999. I mean, they're pushing the limits by adding this big kind of image. And I would say this even has really, really bad contrast for the text down here. But look, as you scroll down, it's just like, it couldn't be more basic. Like your top navigation just stays put. We're just gonna show you big images and try to do something exciting. But it is pretty plain Jane. Look at the footer, notice the footer. Look how boring this is, right? Like if we go to something like our company, man, let's check it out. Again, look at how old school this feels, right? This navigation with these janky rollovers. Do you see this? Like this is pretty standardized stuff. Whereas if we jump over to the jonesodacompany.com, this is a smaller soda company, a smaller drink company. Their images are a little bit more in your face. They're having more fun, more liberty with their graphic design. Colors are pow and in your face, right? They're just being a little bit more experimental, right? So let's go. Uh, shop gear really quick and see what they have for it. Just, it looks a little younger. It's marketing to a very younger demographic, a very specific niche, whereas the Coca-Cola company is not doing that. They're trying to be all things to all people because they're Coke. Okay, I think I've proved my point there on that one. Let's go over, let's talk a little e-commerce really quickly. Here we have target.com. I could have pulled up Walmart or any other company like that, but look, it's very, very basic. We have a very standard like top navigation, boring drop downs, right? Where big focus is search, this works for them, right? But look how very basic this kind of layout is. Where it's basically just advertising the different areas, but it, nothing is really like insane or intense, right? It's still very plain. Similarly, let's jump over to another e-commerce site that's not as massive as Target, but is still very big in its space, and that would be Vans, right? Vans is a skate brand. Skating is gritty, and it, it's it's very, like a young demographic for the most part, but look at how calm this whole thing is. Neutral colors, black, white, grays, right? Like standard old school side navigations with filtering options, very chill. Let's go one step down in exposure to a skate brand that I found called Black Sheep uh, Skate Shop. And they, although they're gonna be still be pretty neutral, right? They are having a little bit more fun. Look at the layouts. Layouts are a little bit bigger, a little bit more experimental. If we go into shop all, e-commerce is pretty stark, you know, for the most part, but you know, they're trying to stay a little bit more on that trend. Let's go even further to a very niched down French boutique. Now we're talking Colors are completely different, right? Images are more edgy. Animations are present. Tattoos on your models. Just everything about this is a little bit more on the experimental or edgy side. They don't care if the site works for everybody. They don't want it to work for everybody. They want it to work for their demographic and it works great. Again, animations are beautiful. Big, bold typography when we first loaded that page. Let's go to whatever this page is over here. Look at that, big, bold typography, huge animations, super fun, but doesn't work for somebody like Target. It works for them right? Because they're smaller, you can be a little bit more experimental. Let's go to our final example, which would be the car industry. Let's look at toyota.com. Pretty plain Jane, right? Look at pretty simple. It's very old. It's, I would, I would say that the Toyota site is, 
let's call it classic. Should we call it classic? That's what it is. It's classic. The footer is very corporate. Imagery is very safe. There's just nothing about it that makes you go, ooh, that's very daring. It makes you feel like you're buying an electric minivan. That's what it makes you feel like. Let's go one step further. Let's go to the Tesla site. It's a little bit more on that edgy side, big full screen imagery here. Cars are beautiful, but still, it's still kind of playing it safe, right? We can go to the order now screen. Everything's still a little bit more professional and corporate, okay? Let's go one step further to a company that actually customizes Teslas, I believe. So they're all about customizing it right away. We're just a little bit more edgy, like graphic design is actually taking place here. It's not, here's an image in a background in a scene. It's let's do something fun. Let's have dynamic imagery right? Uh, dynamic layouts, check these out, right? Typography, kind of two up. It's just mixing and matching things a little bit more. It's a little bit more interesting. Let's go one step further, although it's not that Rolls-Royce is unprofessional, but they are a very specific niche in the market, very high class. You can tell, look, even my cursor is different than a normal cursor. It's not so safe. We have kind of an experimental like menu. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more tricked out, right? More experimental buttons, like call to actions. Things just look, you might say it's classy, but it definitely is a little bit more experimental. It's still giant images and typography. Look at this, we have video in the background. We have giant typography on top of that video. We have scroll animation indicators down at the bottom, right? More video. Like just the whole thing, it, look at that, sliding animations with hidden panels, the whole thing is very different. Look at this, images that are exposing. This is very different than this. Very different indeed, wouldn't you agree? I think I've made my point. Well, that's it. That's the difference between really big high profile websites and lower profile websites. You can be a little bit more experimental when you niche down into an individual market. You can have more fun, be more creative. The larger the website, the more plain Jane you gotta be because you have to be able to cater to a much broader audience. Accessibility becomes incredibly important and that's just the reality of the gig. So what type of projects are you working on right now? Are they really big? Are they really small? Are they somewhere in the middle? And how are you weighing out your ability to be creative while still solving problems? I'd love to hear about that down in the comments. To see all the websites that I mentioned in this episode, you can check for links down in the description. I hope everyone's having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things, and I hope you're making the right call depending on the type of project that you're designing. See you in the next one.